Wow, just look at all of that stuff. Hey everybody, this is Scott from the Old Curiosity Shop. And I have a haul thrift... <laughs> I have a thrift haul video to share with you. Um, and this is just, I'm drinking tea, so I don't know why I'm uh, having a problem saying what I'm trying to say. But this is a thrift haul video. Mid-February, um, it's getting cold again. We're supposed to get more snow tonight in Philly. Um, and so I don't know what tomorrow is going to... Actually, the snow is supposed to come tomorrow night. But it might just be rain. Hopefully it will be. Well, let me show you what I got. Everything that you see here I picked up this week. Some of it I've already thrown into the old curiosity shop. And some of it has already sold. So let me tell you what I got, what I purchased, and what I sold and what I hope to sell the rest for. The first thing you'll see is a set, well, a grouping of 24 Anchor Hawking Avocado Green Lido, well, not Lido, Milano uh, glasses. Way in the back here are eight of the tallest guys. And then in front of them, these are the big iced tea glasses. And then there are smaller uh, glasses, eight more of the smaller size. And then in front of that, eight more um, little uh, sort of little juice glasses or little tumbler size. Now, sometimes it's called Milano, sometimes it's called Lido. My understanding is that the Milano glass was produced from 59 to 63. And then the molds changed and there's slight differences in the glass. Um, the Milano glass the, the actually the the crinkly uh, effect to the glass goes all the way up to the rim as you can see in these where the Lido glass there'll be a smooth section right here the crinkly pattern does not go all the way up to the rim and uh, so I'm fairly certain that these are 1959 and 1963 uh, Milano and not the later Lido style also, Milano was the only was only made in avocado and, and clear crystal. The Lido style was made in um, several colors, including like an ice blue and uh, an amber color. Um, I almost passed these by because, you know, I was born in 1967. So growing up in the 1970s, people were still using these. And, you know, for the longest time, I thought, uh, it's that awful 70s junk. Nobody wants it. Well, everybody wants it now. So, um, anyway, so that's why I got it. $20 I paid for all of this. And I think I can sell them in sets of eight. Eight, eight, and eight. And I think I can get 30, 30, and 30. Maybe 25, 25, 25, but... Uh, but I'm seeing them sell for about $30 in groups of eight. So I have between $75 and $90, I think, worth of uh, avocado green glass from Anchor Hawking. I paid $20 for that. Uh, we'll go back here to the Mikasa. And I have to credit um, some of my fellow thrifters that I watch online for helping clue me into this, because I would have walked right by it. There's a lot of it here. And... <clears throat> Let's see, I paid $40 for all of the Mikasa that you see right here. Actually, $41.50. There's a big 12-inch platter, eight dinner plates, a vegetable bowl, serving bowl, eight soup bowls or cereal bowls, eight bread and butter plates or lunch plates, eight saucers, no teacups, what a shame, and only four of these little berry bowls. But I did some quick checking online and um, what I have seen that has sold, not what people are asking, but what it's actually sold for uh, within the last 60 days, three dinner plates went for 30 bucks and another three dinner plates went for 30 bucks. So my hope is that maybe I have close to, I don't know, maybe $150 here in Mikasa. Uh, I need to do a little more research. I'm going to go back to the thrift shop tomorrow to see if maybe they unpack the teacups. Sometimes things come in at this particular ugh, particular thrift shop. And I did ask them to check. They couldn't find the cups. 
Uh, I know what they look like. They're actually a solid blue. They don't have this pattern. So I'm hoping that if they're there and they unpack them tomorrow, I'll be able to pick the, tea, the coffee cup, teacups up or any other pieces that they might have. There are no chips on any of this. Well, I guess I should show you. Oops. Yeah, no chips until just now. Uh, Mikasa, Sierra Stone Blue Point, made in Japan. See? Really nice mid-century colors. Beautiful. No, um, what am I trying to say? No uh, dish, no uh, utensil marks on that. Really clean, really nice. So I was happy about that. More tea. Uh, this is a little chip and dip set. The pattern is called Forbidden Fruit. You can see in the, let me pull that out. Nice gilding on there, pretty much all still there. There's always a little bit of wear around the edges from these metal holders. Uh, and it's signed, it's Forbidden Fruit. Forbidden fruit, and you can see it has a, a gold stylized 1960s apple in the middle of it, and it's signed by its designer, which someone's going to correct me because I did not study French; I studied German. So, uh, j, j, well, and this guy was an American, uh, so I don't know if it's Georges or just George Briard. Um, did a lot of designing of dinnerware and things like that, glass, in the 50s, 60s, and I think 70s. Uh, I bought this because it was small. I haven't done any research on it, but I'm sure I can get at least 20 bucks for that. And I think I paid $3 for it. I like this little one. It's not one of those great big huge sets that will cost me like $50 to ship. So that was pretty neat. These are three... Um, four magazines, all from the 50s. Three of them are McCall's magazines from March of 52, uh, October of 52, and then this one is November of 1952. Great big magazines. Uh, and the one underneath is the journal, and that is also from November of 1952. But what is so cool that I'll actually sit down and read these, you know, like books, um, which I haven't had a chance to do yet, um, but I'm going to do that before I sell them. It is so much fun to look at the ads, as you probably can guess. And I do not cut up magazines like this and just sell the ads. Uh, I prefer to sell the whole magazine just as it is uh, because it's just the images are so, so cool. Uh, of all the products that were for sale at that time. Look at this, the mid-century furniture. Look. The Olsen Rug Company. Look, she's mad because she has crusty pans and, they, and it gets her down. <laughs> but... She uses Brillo pads. I shine them fast, shine them easy. Oh, how things have changed, right? For the better. Anyway, I guess. Look at all this mid-century furniture. So there's just so much to see in these old magazines in the kitchens. Look at that. Look at that ham. I love ham. Anyway, I'm sure this is for, ooh, ooh. Look at all the fat. Oh my goodness, we didn't know that it was clogging our hearts, but man, that looks good. I'm not a vegetarian, sorry. For those of you who are, you probably just got grossed out by that. What's going on here? No wash, no wipe tonight. Ooh, well, all right. Anyway, so those are really cool. Those were a dollar each, and I'm gonna sell them for between eight and, eight and $10 a piece. That's what I'm gonna ask for. Moving right along here, let's speed this up. Um, back here, um, I cannot remember who made that. I should know, but I don't remember. This Marigold Luster vase. Um, I'll probably get 10 bucks for that. I don't know. 
and I can't remember who made it. Uh, a little Japan uh, planter. See, made in Japan, no chips. She's cute, inexpensive. Uh, he's made in Japan too, a Toby jug. I like his tobacco pipe. Uh, is his uh, is the handle? I should keep this. That's probably what I'm gonna look like in another several years. Uh, made in Japan. Toby mugs are cool. No chips, no cracks. This will appear to an equest a appeal to an equestrian. I hope. Little riding boots, bud vases, probably Japan, but there's nothing on the bottom, so I don't know who made that. Unusual, I've never seen those before. Um, one dollar, one dollar, one dollar, dollar fifty. Don't know what I'm going to ask for them, but not a whole lot. The ever lovely uh, Fire King Peach Luster Deviled Egg Plate. Uh, this is the second one that I've bought in two weeks. The minute I updated my auction and put on there that I, I had two instead of one, like within 10 minutes, one of them sold for, I think, $15. I was asking 18, I think I took 15. So um, now I've got a second one for sale. This is probably from the 50s too. Um, it's a made in Japan platter for serving probably corn muffins. How did I guess? And it's it. Well, where is it? Right there. Made in Japan, as you can see. And this doesn't have any cracks on it either. A little crazing in the and brown on, on the underneath side, but the top of it looks really good. Uh, and it's unusual for. I thought it was an unusual made in Japan piece, and I like it, so I picked it up. Um, and then moving over here to the 1940s, uh, or 1930s rather, this is all 1930s stuff right here. The, all of this is already sold uh, for $75 um, in three lots. This, went, this was one lot, this was one lot, and then the teapot. So I put, the, I put uh, these on first. This is a cutlery set. Uh, it was probably like somebody's wedding gift or something like that during the Great Depression. It looks like it's hardly used. It's outfitted in this box with a silk uh, lining. And I think you do grapefruit with that. Right? Isn't that what that is? But look, uh, they're marked and what's really cool, you'll be able to see. The birth date. August the 18th, 1931. How cool is that to have stainless steel with the actual patent date on it of 1931. And then it also has the good housekeeping seal of approval, which is that thing right there. Um, a little tip for anyone who's trying to sell stuff from this era. If it is this color, and these were the popular colors of 19, the early third, really, really all of the thirties, cream and green. And if you put cream and green in your description, you'll get more hits rather than just saying, you know, old 1930s knives and forks, say cream and green. It's a search word that people use who collect this stuff. They know to, to type that into the, type that into the search engine engine. Um, and that's actually how the lady who bought these found these because I asked her and she did search under the words cream and green because I listed them that way. So she bought these for $25 and I said, hold on, I've got more. I just haven't listed it yet. Not made by the same maker because these only say stainless steel on the back. See? And they don't have the little grommets, but that's what you call that, on them. But they match. It still has that um, pearlescent. So they might have been made by the same company, but uh, she bought these for $25. So $50 for all of this. I paid $5 for that. And I think I paid $3 for the knives and forks. No spoons, but anyway. 
it sold. Uh, and then back here, this teapot, let me show you how this works, our coffee pot. You could do tea as well. This pot is made by the Hall Company, and it is a teapot or coffee pot. It's got stylized deco flowers on the front. This is made in the 40s, and uh, let's show you the bottom of it. This is the Dripolator, the Enterprise Aluminum Company of Massillon, Ohio. And the way it works is like this. Now this is porcelain, or, um, but you, uh, you take this piece here, drop it down, you put your coffee grounds in there, or your tea leaves in there, and this guy goes on top, and you pour your hot water in here. And I don't know if you can see, but there are little tiny, tiny holes in the bottom of this. The water drips through, lands in this pot, steeps the coffee, and then it sifts through that and you have hot coffee in your pot when you're done. So then you just take this out, you take, you take that out, and you have a pot of coffee. That sold for $25 and I didn't pay more than $5 for this. Uh, so if you ever see one of these pots and it says Dripolator on the bottom, try to see if you can get the aluminum parts that, that go with it. That's what's really going to make the sale, because a lot of times these will turn up and these will be missing. Finally, I bought two lids. I recognized both of these lids as being from uh, Anchor Hocking. I'm sorry, uh, Hazel Atlas. That's a Hazel Atlas butter dish lid with no chips or cracks on it and uh, this is a Hazel Atlas crisscross uh, big 8 inch refrigerator dish lid and believe it or not that lid right there will sell for about 20 bucks uh, and this was like two dollars and I think that lid was a dollar so I'm gonna do really well on these glass lids because uh, they break easily and people are always looking to replace replace them. So I think I told you everything I knew about the things that I have, the prices that I paid, and what I hope to uh, sell everything for. And then over here, I'm just playing some 1960s albums. I went to a place, these were uh, free t uh, today. So I have this little cheap a turntable sitting here on my stove um, to play the music and they're 1960s uh, this is the funniest one because of the of the graphics on the label and the title Jackie Gleason presents music to change her mind I wonder if she changed her mind uh, hmm Yes, it is that Jackie Gleason from The Honeymooners. A lot of people don't realize he was a really good orchestra leader. Very nice man uh, and a very talented musician. Beautiful uh, orchestra leader. So that's uh, Jackie Gleason and his orchestra. And uh, that's not what we're listening to. We are listening to Come, Come Dance to the Hits of Sammy K. Swing and Sway with Sammy K. So there it is, folks. Another thrift, thrift haul, some of it is already sold. The rest of it will be online in Scott's Old Curiosity Shop on eBay. Check it out. Thanks for watching. Have a wonderful weekend and happy thrifting, everyone.